Greetings, folks, and welcome to today's show. Uh, I'm sure you're aware by now that on the uh, forthcoming election in uh, November, November the 7th, there are four amendments to the uh, Tennessee Constitution on the ballot. And so you're going to be asked to vote uh, on four of those. And a couple of them are a little bit uh, ambiguous or confusing. And uh, uh, so we hope during this uh, time to uh, help you understand them a little better and, and really get to the basic issue that you need to decide. And my guest today is, uh, is the, uh, the Honorable Jim uh, Conley, who is a, uh, a Tullahoma attorney of many years and also is the uh, is the municipal judge. So uh, welcome, Jim. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, appreciate it. So uh, these are complicated issues, folks, and uh, so I hope we, we can help you out a little bit. So uh, with that, let's take a short commercial break and uh, we'll get into the substance. made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. Gridlock of party politics in Congress has affected every American, both your family and mine. Far too long, they've forgotten the very people they serve. That's why I'm running for Congress in the 6th Congressional District of Tennessee to be your representative. I promise not just to reach across the aisle, but I'll stand in it. Let's stand for teachers and school systems. Let's support the elderly and our brave veterans and military. I'm not asking you to vote for me, but to vote for us. I'm Mike Winton, and I approve this message. Let the smokehouse be your mountain getaway destination in beautiful Monteagle, Tennessee. Enjoy our cabins, restaurant, and old general store. Shop the smokehouse.com featuring homemade barbecue sauces, jellies, and many other fine Tennessee products. Our live Music on the Mountain series features some of the best local and Nashville talent every Friday and Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. No cover, kids welcome. We're back, folks, and uh, we're talking today about the uh, constitutional amendments that are going to appear on the ballot in the November election. Your ballot is going to look like this. And uh, down the, uh, the left-hand side are the, uh, the, the governor's and, uh, 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 election. And following that are the four amendments all lined up on the left side. Everybody else is, is on the right. So that's the way you'll be uh, confronting it. And uh, hopefully you can, uh, we can help you enough to vote on all four of them. Uh, the first one, Amendment 1, deals with, the, uh, with a very controversial abortion issue. And so uh, our guest today is uh, Jim Conley, who is the, uh, a local attorney of uh, some, some years standing. So, uh, uh, Jim, how about uh, running over Amendment 1 and uh, give us uh, your view of the, uh, the implications there. Okay, do you mean read this? Re I'd read the amendment, yeah, okay. that'd be good. The amendment is, uh, would be read as follows. Nothing in the Constitution secures or protects a right to abortion or requires the funding of an abortion. The people retain the right through their elected state representatives and state senators to enact, amend, or repeal statutes regarding abortion, including but not limited to circumstances of pregnancy resulting from rape or incest or when necessary to save the life of the mother. Well, the, I want to give, if I may, give a little brief history. Uh, the first uh, uh, restriction on abortion in Tennessee occurred in 1883. Uh, Chester Arthur was president of the United States. It was also the same year that the... Been a while. Uh, yeah, it has been a while. Uh, and then that, that law was in effect until 1973 when Roe v. Wade was uh, was uh, set out by the United States Supreme Court, and in Roe v. Wade, the uh, out of a 72 72 majority, 
the Supreme Court said that out of the right of privacy, a woman has the right to decide whether or not to have an abortion in the first three months of, of the pregnancy. Then uh, Tennessee, as in several states, had to do some uh, changing of their laws and they, they put some restrictions on that. And in 2000, Planned Parenthood filed an action in Tennessee. It was actually Plan uh, Planned Parenthood versus Sunquist. And, and that decision was decided in 2000. And the then Tennessee Supreme Court said that that under the Tennessee Constitution, it didn't necessarily address it under the United States Constitution because that, that 2000 decision was addressing some state statutes that put restrictions on abortion. And the Tennessee Supreme Court said because of the different clauses in reference to liberty in, our, in the Tennessee Constitution, that those restrictions that were put on by the Tennessee legislature basically in the 1980s were uh, unconstitutional. And uh, there was one dissent in that, and that was Justice Mickey Barker. And Mickey Barker made some reference in his dissent about the way to, only way to, un uh, to undo that. It was due to a constitutional amendment, and there have been several uh, acts by the Tennessee legislature to get that going, and finally uh, it's now on our ballot. So, uh, but as far as, as, far as the, the amendment itself, it's a strange way of, of doing an amendment because it's taking from the sovereign, the voters, and we're the sovereigns of, of, of the state. It's delegating our sovereign right to the Tennessee legislature, and of course that legislature is going to change at least every two years. So it, it's, a, it, it's an unusual it's, way of doing it. It tends to be a little bit of an unpredictable organization yeah, too. Uh, it, it is. It, it's, it's a strange way of, usually there's some either restrictions or, or grants, but then when you just delegate it to a, a legislative body which uh, as I mentioned, it's subject to change at least every two years. That's a fickle way of doing it. Well, the, uh, uh, one of the interesting things uh, on this, uh, more interesting and one of the more uh, controversial ones, is the fact that there's absolutely no exception. They make an issue uh, toward the end of that, uh, of that amendment of the fact that uh, this prohibition, uh, in effect, uh, it even includes uh, the ability to uh, get an abortion uh, from rape, incest, mm -hmm. or yeah. even to save the life of the mother. Yeah. So theoretically, the legislature could ban all of that. That's exactly right. Uh, the, the legislature could, could ban it one year, and the next year change that as well. So that's uh, that's an, another problem with this. But And that's one of the criticisms uh, of this. And of course, the, the women's rights groups uh, have uh, nationwide have been critical of this because uh, they firmly believe in a woman's right to make these choices in the first three months of her life, and I think they're comfortable with Roe v. Wade, and and uh, so uh, it it is controversial, but it's an emotional issue. You it know, is. You know, it's an extremely it emotional is. issue when you deal with. And emotion. we're basically dealing with the the two sides. I think can be characterized on the on the one side the right to life, and on the other side, the right to privacy, which means that that women yeah. and their families and doctors should have the, the ability to right. decide this kind of an issue instead of the legislature. Uh -huh. So uh, that's a, that's a very, uh, and uh, somebody characterized this as being a crossroads issue in Tennessee, that it's, uh, it's really going to be uh, uh, a very significant, uh, and the, uh, the general consensus seems to be that while I think uh, well, let me back up a second. One of the one of the things that has some people a little bit unsettled is the fact that Tennessee's laws are a little more liberal than the surrounding states, and we're getting imports, if you will. Uh, other people are coming That's in. That's true. And Tennessee that it, increases the number that we uh, give here. That is, and as far as when you're getting into the numbers, it's interesting. The the demographic that is seeking abortion more than any other age group are 10 to 14 year old girls. That is stunning to me. Uh, apparently 24% yeah. of those females that are seeking abortion in Tennessee are between the ages that are 10 and 14. And uh, I wasn't aware of that. That's, yeah, in, that's it's, incredible. Yeah, a quarter of them. A quarter of them, that's exactly right. And uh, that, that really is a bothersome from whatever political viewpoint you have. That, that's, that's a problem to see just young children in that position. Well, you know, and, and as always in this sort of thing, I, 
I think sort of as a, as a matter of druthers, I hate to see embedded in the Constitution an absolute, you know, in, almost in any direction. We got two of them in these, yeah, in these amendments, and uh, we'll talk about another in a minute. But uh, this, uh, this issue of, uh, of just eliminating the role of the family and of the individual involved and, and of the, uh, the medical folks, uh, the potential for just taking them out of the scene uh, altogether is just, uh, I don't know, puzzling. Well, you hate to do things in the short term that have long-term consequences, so uh, you just hate to, hate to lock those doors. Yeah. Well, and I know there some, some wag said, you know, the, uh, the Tennessee legislature can't be relied on to make wise choices. And you mentioned a minute ago, you know, which I think we're inclined not to think about it, is the fact that they'll make a rule next year or, or failure to make a rule next year and turn around the next year and, and go in the other direction. Yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, that's going to leave a very uncertain uh, path down the road. And another uh, point uh, which I think is, is really uh, important is the fact that uh, women who are desperate will find a way to, make, to have an abortion. And that will result in both unsafe ones uh, and, of course, the illegal ones, you know. So you put, you put whoever's performing it and the, and the patient at legal risk and, uh, and also the fact that it may be done in, done in an uh, unsafe medically uh, way. And uh, so that's a, uh, and I think that's a very telling point. Yeah, I mean, the history when uh, states that have restrictions on abortion, that pops up. And that's, there's a lot of deaths regarding back row abortions, and that's most unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, well, and uh, as I say, this is, this is one of two areas that we're running into in these four amendments, and uh, they just, that is that uh, there doesn't seem to be any middle ground here. No. And you wonder if it couldn't be uh, approached a little more sensibly. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I want to just on a wrap up on that one. It, it really it, it gives no certainty to the law. Like, as we mentioned, it could change frequently. Uncertainty, so, yes. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Okay, well, with that, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, at Amendment Two. And I'll read it if you want me to. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, judges of the Supreme Court or any intermediate appellate court shall be appointed for a full term or fill a vacancy by and at the discretion of the governor, shall be confirmed by the legislation legislature and thereafter shall be elected in a retention election by the qualified voters of the state. Uh, confirmation by default occurs if the legislature fails to reject or accept it, and the rest of that is uh, some verbiage on that. But, you know, Tennessee has 29 appellate judges, and this got on the minute because there's, there's a conflict between the, the traditional wing of the Republican Party and, and the uh, Tea Party version, and that's the fight over that. But, our current system in, is that our Tennessee Constitution says that all judges are to be elected, and our procedure has been when, when a judge is, uh, dies in office, the governor appoints that person, and, and the legislature is not involved. And then after a, a short time thereafter, the next election cycle, that person uh, runs for a, election. And so and we had that recently in Coffee County, as a matter of fact. but. Uh, this, this is, uh, you know, my, my biggest problem with our judicial election of appellate judges, and all judges in the state of Tennessee, to be blunt with you, is that you go through a political party affiliation, and I don't like that. I don't like it from the viewpoint of that we've gotten so decisive over two words in our language, Republican and Democrat. And as soon as you say one, the other side jumps to the conclusion you're the enemy. And to introduce that in our judicial process is a serious mistake. And it, it, it attacks the integrity of the court. It loses respect for courts when people feel that decisions are, are politically based. And this constitutional amendment does not address that. And I think that is our leading problem on the way judges in Tennessee uh, get on the bench, is it goes through first through political primaries 
uh, by designation of Democrat Republican, or you can run as an independent. But uh, I think increasingly that is a risk. Yes, and uh, and basically this this is fundamentally, if I could characterize it this way, this uh, amendment basically is pretty much codifying the way that we're we're already electing them, uh, appointing them, that is, and uh, with a, a couple of exceptions, which we'll took in a minute when we get okay. back off of a commercial break. At the time, maybe you were just building a bridge, a business, or a community. Maybe you were simply working for a home or a better tomorrow. At the time, you served out of duty and love of country. But in that time, we see a legacy created an American dream lived. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. The Kia Cadenza sale continues at Russell Barnett Kia of Tullahoma. We still have a great selection to choose from. Purchase one of these Kia Cadenzas out of dealer inventory and receive dealer invoice pricing starting as low as $32,545. No games, no gimmicks, no hassles. With America's best warranty, the 10-year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, Kia is the power to surprise. Invoice pricing for a limited time only. Russell Barnett, Kia of Tullahoma. Why buy anywhere else? I'm meteorologist Leland Statham from the News Channel 5 Weather Center. Look to Jim Fuller and crew for local news night here on Channel 6. We're back, folks, and uh, we're talking today with uh, uh, Jim Conley, who is an attorney in uh, Tullahoma, who is uh, helping us to unscramble these constitutional amendments that are on the ballot uh, in November coming up. So you're going to need to understand these in order to vote uh, wisely. So we were saying uh, that this is uh, this is basically codifying the, the system that's been in use since I think 1971 or thereabout, uh, with one exception, and that is they don't use the nominating commission anymore. Uh, some 17 citizens who gave the governor a list, but. <clears throat> On the other hand, they've added in the approval of the legislature, which still has a, a, a sort of a political element in the approval process. So uh, uh, that's, and I guess, you know, it's, a, it's a pretty much an individual choice as to whether you, uh, you like that uh, arrangement or not. But your point, and, and I would certainly agree with that, a lot of folks do that, that resorting to uh, direct election puts it in the political system which we most folks are uncomfortable with these days anyway well if i could add a refinement on that it's not necessarily the direct election it's election by having it come through political parties and i think that yeah. when somebody runs for for a judge they shouldn't have next to them democrat republican hopefully they're all independent i mean that's that's a trusted position of of, of honor and respect and the citizens have to respect, and if there's an element of politics in it, you lose that element of respect. And uh, that's a deterioration of respect for yeah. the law, and that's not healthy in the long term or the short term. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Okay, well, um, what do you think about uh, Amendment 3? This is the uh, banning the income tax. And here again, as we mentioned a little earlier, uh, whereas the uh, the amendment one gives complete authority to the legislature to do whatever they want to in the field of abortion, but comes to the income tax and it goes in the opposite uh, uh, direction in the sense that uh, they don't have any latitude at all. No, that's Can't right. Can't touch it. So uh, it, it wouldn't hurt to read this one. You want to do okay, that? Okay, I'll be glad to. Uh, notwithstanding the authority to tax privileges or any other authority set forth in the Constitution, the legislature shall not levy, authorize, or otherwise permit any state or local tax upon payroll or earned personal income or any state or local tax measured by payroll or earned personal income. However, nothing contained herein shall be construed as prohibiting any tax 
in effect on January the 11th, 2011, or adjusted uh, or adjustment of the rate of such tax. You know, again, uh, what what tickles me about this is that in this one, you'll have to excuse me. In this one, the the legislature is barring the the, the the sovereign voters are barring from the legislature a right to make these decisions, and uh, in the First Amendment, that's not the case. So it is you, you we. We uh, just trust opposite. them in three, and we trust them in one. So it's a, it's a little bit uh, of an inconsistency. But again, there is a current constitutional provision barring uh, uh, income tax. And uh, I think this amendment was done as a political motivation to get more people out to vote. You know, it was it was a hot issue to get people to come out to vote. So I, th I think I think that's probably what motivated this amendment. Well, uh, and I I mentioned it I, I a little earlier. I I kind of just my own constitution is sort of opposed to putting absolutes in the in the constitution, with a couple of exceptions. We'd like to guarantee our freedom and a few other things, but. On the on the practical, whether they're social issues or economic issues, uh, I kind of hate to see an, an absolute uh, uh, put into the Constitution, and there has been uh, a lot of comments along that line. Now we've been uh, we've already uh, stopped the inheritance and the gift tax, I believe. Yes, th that expires in a year or two, and uh, that's being phased out. Uh, so uh, I think that's phased out in uh, 2016. It's a, uh, effective 2016, there will be no inheritance or gift tax. But uh, meanwhile, uh, there's also been a movement underway uh, down in the bowels of the, or of the state somewhere to uh, uh, eliminate the, the tax on uh, interest and dividends, which yeah. is, is presently that's a whole on, income a source tax. of income tax. That's an income tax. And there you're taxing money that uh, you would anticipate could be used for investment and taking it out of the pot. So, uh, And that gets down to the equity of who, who carries the burden of taxation, the cost of government, and, and that's increasing a hot issue, not just in Tennessee, but nationwide. Who pays the price? Uh, who pays the price for civilization? Yeah. Well, and, and you know, fundamentally, you get down to the question of, uh, okay, I think we we all expect the state to carry on some functions, and as a matter of fact, we're we're asking the state to do more and more in this uh, in this uh, society as as time goes on. So, where are they supposed to get the money? Yeah, and there's the rub. There's the rub, and and. On the national level, the deficit has been increasing, and then, unfortunately, the top one tenth of one percent have increased in the beginning. I think of the earnings in the last five years, the wealth has increased by 93. The, the 93 percent of the wealth has been been received by the top one tenth of one percent, and then you get into these equitable arguments yeah. that yeah. Uh, I find uh, need to be discussed and addressed. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know. You got any uh, any particular? Uh, uh, I mentioned a little earlier, and I think it's worth uh, mentioning that uh, my I had the experience with Proposition 13 in California, which put a, a lid on property taxes uh, in existence at the time this was passed, which has now been 25 or 30 years ago, on property tax. The consequence of that was that. It wound up really distorting the the whole tax structure in in California, and as well as uh, creating a real problem for uh, for for them to raise the money for some things. Education, I know, took a big big hit as a result of that. So, uh, and if we do a little way with the uh, if if we have absolutely uh, no tax on on income or no possibility ever. Uh, it's going to wind up falling back on the property and the sales tax again, and uh, and that's the, really regressive. You know, you and I, if we go to the grocery store and buy a loaf of bread, we, we pay a tax on that, and, and and poor people, 
pay the same tax on it, and it but it's a greater percentage of their income than, than other people, and so it's, uh, uh, I think there's an inequity there. Yeah. Well, we're about to run out of time. Tell the folks uh, how to vote on A4, Amendment 4, which has to do with lotteries. Well, I, I think and when when you read it, you'll have no idea of what you're talking about. Well, I'm not going to read it, but I, I think <laughs> it, it basically it brings back on four. That was the uh, getting the VA and, and the lottery. And, uh, the uh, lottery. Yeah, the and apparently, when this thing was originally passed, they they omitted that. It makes reference to a 503C19 uh, entity, and that's uh, VFWs and Veterans yeah. of Foreign Wars and and uh, it puts them in the same category as these other charitable organizations. And I think that's just, you, then you get in the same moral issue then that the state has authorized certain gambling of certain people and not in others, and the state runs its own lottery. So uh, that, that whole anti-gambling thing has been eroding at a pretty fast rate yeah. once the state starts selling their tickets. And, uh, well, the, the single rub on this thing uh, appears to be that it, it has had a devastating effect on the income producing ability of these veterans organizations. Yeah. And they are the ones who are stepping up saying, please folks vote yes on this uh, so that we can uh, can get back to oh, I, I, A I lot of them have closed, uh, yeah. you know, they've gone out of business. Yeah, I, I would be supporting that, uh, that they do some, they do some good, good things, those, yeah. those outfits. Well, that we've run out of time. So we're gonna have to take a short commercial break, folks, and wrap up. All right. first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and news makers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Folks, and we've been trying today to shed some light on the constitutional amendments that are on the November ballot uh, with uh, our guest, uh, Jim uh, Conley, who is an uh, attorney in, in Tullahoma and qualified to address these things. So, uh, Jim, you got a, a quick word for the uh, folks? I do. I want to point out that on any of these amendments, for them to be successful, they have to receive the majority of the people that vote not only for the amendment, but they have to receive more than 50% of the people that totally vote for all the governor's candidates. There are several governor's candidates, so each amendment has a two-step process for them to be successful. So. Wow. Well, with that, folks, uh, Jim, thank you for joining us, and uh, thank you for inviting us into your parlor, folks, and we'll see you next time.